Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, that should be, that should be good. Okay, I can see that. I can see myself. <laughs> All right. Hey everybody, Aaron from Solis here. I guess we're waiting a few minutes. Um, we'll start, yeah, start in a few minutes. Put my watch over here. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Welcome, welcome. Hope everybody's having a good day. Just started raining here in Singapore, at least in my part of town. Hope uh, the weather's nicer wherever you, you are. <laughs> All right, I hope this goes well. Live demos, always pretty exciting. Give it just another minute or so. Do, do. Welcome everybody, welcome, welcome. We'll be starting in just a minute. Hope everyone's doing well out there. API days, join the conference. <laughs> yeah. We'll just start in another 30 seconds or so, okay? Let's check to see if I have any messages before we kick off. All right. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, we got 15 people here. I think that's a pretty good number to start. Let's Let's kick this off. People can kind of come and come and go as they want. Um, all right, hit start. There we go. All right. Well, hello, hello, everybody. My name is Aaron Lee. I am a developer advocate here at Solace. I've uh, been with the company about nine years. Uh, before this, I was a solutions architect. I was a sales engineer. I was a uh, professional services consultant with the company. I've been uh, around the world with them. Um, who is Solace? We are a uh, Canadian company that uh, specializes in event-driven technology uh, based in Ottawa, Canada. That's where I'm from, although I am living in uh, Singapore right now, which is our second biggest office globally. Um, we have a booth here as part of API Days. Come and talk to us afterwards uh, if you want to find out more about the company and, and whatnot. I'm going to use my clicker here. Okay, so today's talk, events and being event-driven and the async API. So events, events are important. You know, the universe 
is event driven. Everything in it uh, is, is cause and effect, right? Um, you know, for businesses, every time an inventory updates happens, you know, a shipment leaves, a truck is delayed. Uh, these are events in your business ecosystem. Every time a sensor fires in your IoT infrastructure, you know, um, you know, from your connected cars to your connected trains, your pipelines, your sensors, these are all events. You know, finance, every time a uh, trade happens or someone places an order, these are events uh, that are happening inside your business and your system. So events are important and modern enterprises are moving towards event-driven architectures. But why? You know, it's for the money. It's for the money. It helps unlock, well, it's, it's not just money, right? It is for the customer satisfaction. It's for the business value. It is for um, being able to, um, you know, reduce load, uh, execute things faster, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's about value. It's about, it's about a move towards real-time uh, data, uh, which can provide better customer experience, better business experience, um, for, and, and better application uh, efficiencies. So event-driven, real-time uh, architectures. Events as a series of, uh, as a stream of events. Data as a series of stream of events. Moving away from this old kind of traditional uh, batch-oriented uh, kind of stock. Okay, so events are important, right? And before we get into it, let's just rewind a little bit talk quickly about uh, how things used to be. I'm a software developer, so I always like to kind of look at things from a bit of a code perspective. You know, back in the day when I first got into it, software was very monolithic. A lot of it still is, especially in a lot of these big enterprises. Um, you had very proprietary systems, you know, IBMs and uh, Cognoses, not Cognos, um, and, uh, you know, Cisco's and, and um, I don't know, TIBCO, for example. You know, a lot of these big application stacks, you know, um, you know, if you were a, a bank employee or a big enterprise, um, you would be working with this big technology stack. A lot of it very proprietary and um, a lot of it very batch oriented database centric systems, you know, kind of at the end of the day, you push all this stuff into a database or you wait for the database to run its computations and you'd get kind of the, the results from that, right? Kind of ETL style, style stuff. And, you know, software used to be very large as well, monolithic, very big. So like kind of incremental changes, agile style development was very, very difficult. So a lot of things started to change in software development methodologies. We moved towards more agile development, um, you know, the rise of open source, uh, bringing open source into these large uh, kind of enterprises, uh, decomposing monolithic applications into a series of microservices, which helped enable kind of rapid development and change. But of course, as you take a monolith and break it down into microservices, you're now making the communication and the orchestration between different software functions more complicated, right? When you had a monolith, you know, like a big Java application, I needed to call a function on a method or on, a, on an object, an instance. I just called that method, you know, if I had it in my JVM. Um, now with microservices, you know, it could be running on any number of servers. You know, you had to have, you know, it could be different containers running, you know, and who knows where it's running. Things like Kubernetes and you know, Istio service mesh were invented to help kind of manage uh, kind of microservices running and being deployed and kind of uh, the communication between them. So, um, and not only just uh, in terms of communication uh, between, uh, between these applications, but you know, the, the move towards more real time. Customers demand um, access to their, to their data, to their money uh, more quickly. Inventory updates need to happen more often than at the end of the day. You know, bank, you know, put, you know, cashing your check needs to happen faster than, you know, at the end of the day, right? We want things now. And so this move towards real-time systems has driven up load um, and driven up kind of volume on our network. So looking for more efficiencies and how to do this kind of stuff. You know, back in the day, I, I started doing HTML back in the 90s. Um, you know, the internet was simple back then. You know, you had a, an Apache web server, you had your Netscape browser, and you typed in index.html and you got a web page. Um, and as applications moved into the cloud, you know, HTTP seemed like the perfect uh, kind of protocol to make things tough. Every, everything understands HTTP. So, you know, your, your proxies, your, your firewalls, your load balancers, it all works with that. But HTTP as a protocol is not always the best choice. You know, it doesn't allow for um, server to client interactions. Um, it's much more of a kind of a, a, a client server architecture. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that, the evolution of REST, the evolution of um, REST over HTTP and API. So what does it mean to be event-driven? Well, um, in my opinion, 
it's kind of some of these, right? So being more real time, being more reactive, asynchronous, non-blocking, and uh, decoupled or loosely coupled. Um, now, event-driven, you can think of it from an architectural perspective, you can think of it from a software perspective, and some of these terms apply more. Uh, in now, could I use REST? You know, people are very familiar with REST. Uh, we all are, you know, every software uh, API that is out there uh, um, has, a, has a REST interface. The thing is, REST over HTTP, you know, it's very common. It's very common to make service calls with it, to like, you know, write to a database, to like get an update, get some information, blocking calls. But REST architecture, by definition, is client server. So it's kind of client to a server. There's no server to client style of communication. REST over HTTP is point to point. You know, you're talking to a specific uh, URL or, or URI, you know, kind of one to one, point to point to point of connection. And HTTP at a network level is actually a synchronous uh, protocol, a blocking protocol. Your app waits for that 200 OK or the, uh, the 401, 501, whatever uh, response to come back from the other side. So REST isn't always best. As you start to design your architecture, your microservice architecture, um, you know, REST is great for some things, externally facing APIs, you know, where a customer can call into it. But internally, you know, in terms of communication between uh, your microservices, it's not always the best choice. So let's see, um, if you've ever done any GUI programming, you know, if you're, if you're uh, you know, played with, uh, you know, Java Swing, for example, back in the day, you know, you've done event-driven design for programming. Every time you click a button or move a window or resize something, events are being fired by the, GUI framework into your application for you to respond to. So with JavaScript, it's inherently event-driven. Um, same thing with video game design. Back in high school, we used to make video games. Every time you kind of move the joystick or click the fire button, you know, you're, you're receiving input from the human. Um, these are events that you react to. But they also occur in real life, right? Every time you, you push an elevator door button, or you swipe your credit card, you make a payment, or every time an alert is raised, you know, all of these things are events that you can then code to and expect. Now, when we learn coding in, in school, um, you know, we, all, we often start with kind of just like calling functions, right? Like calling a function um, is very service oriented. You know, it puts the function on the stack, you wait for the response to come back. It's kind of a blocking call. And a lot of, you know, REST-based APIs are very similar. You know, you make a call to a REST API, and you wait for that response to come back. But let's take a look at some kind of uh, event-driven patterns that you might know. Um, and, and how, they, how they're actually implemented. Typically, event-driven is non-blocking, more real-time, and typically is, uh, does, uh, uses callbacks. Um, people might also be familiar with uh, like async patterns like await, uh, using promises as well. These are very common in, um, in uh, software design today. Uh, but callbacks are, the, here's, so let's start with this first one here, the observer pattern. This is the GUI pattern. You know, you would have a button that you want to observe, um, you know, that is the subject. And, you know, if you have a, an application that wants to know about when that button gets clicked, you register a callback with it. The subject will notify you whenever it gets clicked, right? So it's an event. It's firing an event to say, hey, I've been clicked. Whereas you don't pull the button. You're not querying the button, uh, pulling it to try to find out if its state has changed. That is not very efficient. You wouldn't write an app to query a button repeatedly to find out when it's been clicked. You just tell the button to tell you much more efficient. Uh, the reactor pattern, this is typically used uh, for IO applications. So you might have you know, um, data getting processed, coming in off a network. Um, rather than having the, 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 uh, the application or the thread that receives that data do the processing, you would pass it out to worker applications, worker threads that are doing the computation for you. These could even be microservices, right? Rather than inside, inside a monolith where you have multiple threads, these could all be microservices. You scale that up or scale down. And this dispatcher in the middle, the reactor, is just passing the kind of information between the two. So you, you end up with a much more responsive system. And the publish subscribe pattern or pub sub, uh, this is not necessarily a software design pattern, but this is more of an architectural pattern, network pattern, and how you can make applications communicate in a loosely coupled way. And so um, you would use a topic, a topic of interest. Uh, consumers of the event would register uh, interest in that topic and producers or publishers would send an update and event on that topic when something has occurred. This is your, your payment. 
This is your database update. This is anything. Anything that you want to be notified about could be sent as an event using a topic. Now, who routes this data? Well, that is typically left up to an intermediary, an event broker that is, sits here in the middle and that keeps track of all the publishers and all the subscribers and the topics. And when data arrives, when events arrive into the broker, the broker figures out who wants to receive that particular event, that message, and routes it to the downstream consumer. The publish subscribe is the fundamental event-driven communication pattern uh, for enterprises, for microservices, IoT, you name it. This is how you do event-style distribution. So what is an event broker? Very, very quickly, uh, this is what Solus uh, makes, one of our products. Um, it's a middleware component. It's used to kind of connect applications via different ways of communicating, point to point, kind of one to one, similar to REST, but publish subscribe, and of course, request reply, kind of all the different styles of data communication, both synchronous and asynchronous. Um, it allows communication of applications to be efficient, bi-directional, which is very important in a kind of a mesh any-to-any uh, -any application design and asynchronous as well. Now, there are many players in this space. Some are, uh, you know, only work in one particular cloud vendor. Some are multi-cloud. Some only work on prem. Some only work for IoT. Some only work for web messaging. And some kind of do uh, it all. And if you want to talk a little bit more about that, come check out our booth, and we'll be happy to kind of talk about how we compare to some of these other uh, players in, uh, in this space. There's lots of different protocols as well. You know, REST emerged a long time ago in the 90s as kind of a standard for internet-based communication. But it took a little bit longer for the, the messaging or eventing standards to kind of come to the forefront. Uh, protocols like uh, AMQP and MQTT, these are wireline protocols, standards, that allow uh, applications and uh, servers and things to be built that allow this kind of standardized communication, not using proprietary technology proprietary protocols that kind of lock you into a single vendor. People might be familiar with JMS. JMS is a standard, but it's an application programming standard. It's not a wireline. So you can't just take one JMS application and have it talk to one particular JMS server. You know, it still has to be from the same kind of broker. Whereas MQTT, uh, REST, uh, AMQP, these are wireline protocols that allow interoperability kind of best of breed, right? Um, you wouldn't have to use like a, 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 an Apache browser to use an Apache web server, that'd be crazy. If you want to use a Chrome browser, you need a Chrome server? No, because HTTP is a standard, it allows interoperability between these different So how is data routed? How are events routed? I kind of mentioned that you, know, you publish on a topic, you consume from a topic. And this is just an example of how topics are implemented in Solace um, and other protocols as well, very similar in MQTT. It is a hierarchical, a uh, label, a description of the data contained within the event. You can see that there are multiple levels here separated by slashes. And this is kind of defines what the data, what the event is all about. Now you could say, hey, that looks kind of like a, a URL, a REST URL. Yeah, it is. You know, just, just put on the front HTTPS, blah, 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 blah. And now you have kind of a REST endpoint. So topics and REST URLs kind of look very similar um, with this kind of uh, slash level delimiter. Now, in terms of routing, how do I attract these events? Well, you subscribe to them. Now, you can subscribe exactly to a particular topic, you know, this topic exactly, or you can use wildcards. Now, this is one big differentiation uh, between uh, event routing, uh, topic routing, and something like uh, an API, a REST-based API, a gateway. It allows you to absorb or define um, multiple, uh, allow you to receive multiple topics or events uh, by using a single subscription. So different types of wildcards. We have a star here, which is a single level wildcard. We have a greater than, which is a multi-level wildcard. Uh, very similar, if you're familiar with MQTT, there are other slightly different wildcards, but that do the same kind of function. So it allows you to kind of use a single subscription to attract many different types of things. So all card payments or all inventory updates, you can, specify, you can be very specific. I only want inventory updates about this particular product. Or you can use a wildcard to say, I don't care what product, I want all the inventory with a single subscription. So using that kind of, okay, we got this you know, code generation. Can we, we, we're here to talk about async API. Um, can we do code generation from a topic schema? Um, 
looking at the REST side, at the API world, you know, um, this has been solved by Open API, by Swagger, event, um, API management tools uh, for this world, you know, and you'll have an API portal, there'll be documentation in there, how to, you know, do automatic code generation from that documentation, um, you know, governance, the API portal will do authorization and authentication and all sorts of other stuff to make sure that, you know, as a, when a client makes a call into your API uh, based system, um, it goes through that portal and all this kind of stuff is, is there. It allows you to kind of answer things like who, what, when, where, why, and how for RESTful uh, APIs. But what about events? Now, that hasn't really existed up until very, very recently. Enter async API. Now, async API is uh, an open source specification. Um, you can check out their web page at asyncapi.com. Uh, it has some industry backers, including uh, including Solus. Um, so this is an open source initiative, and you know they are looking to essentially do for event-driven applications and event-driven specifications what Swagger and OpenAPI have done for the kind of REST synchronous blocking request reply uh, world. So what you need is an event portal. And this is essentially uh, the product that Solace is building. So working with Async API, using their, their specification, we've started to design a, uh, an interface to allow architects to define their systems, to allow developers to discover, um, you know, the, uh, to do code generation, um, for data scientists to browse through libraries of events. And that is what we're gonna be walking through today uh, in terms of kind of taking Async API spec and doing some code generation. We're going to be using the Solus portal just because it makes it uh, a little bit easier. So we're going to talk about async API in during throughout this talk, uh, throughout this demo. How are we doing for time? All right, that's enough slides, I think. Um, yeah, this is kind of what we kind of end up with. Um, you know, on the top here is what you would do typically with Swagger. You know, you have your open API specification, run it through some code generation. You, know, you get a bunch of generated code, whether it's Java or Node or whatever you want, and you can basically deploy uh, your applications that terminate and do your synchronous request reply using HTTP. Same kind of thing, right? Async API, doing run it through the code gen. We are building code generators. There are new ones coming out all the time. Just turning up my air conditioning a little bit. There we go. Um, we're going to be playing with the Spring Cloud Stream ones because I'm a Java person, but there are uh, ones for Node. I think there's one for Python that's being worked on. And it allows you to not just use it for you know, one particular protocol, but many of the different protocols that support event-enabled, event-driven kind of uh, applications. So AMQP, MQTT, there's going to be interfaces, there's Kafka interfaces in there, um, all sorts of stuff that allow you to basically take this code and generate uh, all the required kind of wiring to make it work in your application or in your uh, domain. So this is what we're coming up with. Solace is developing an event portal that allows you to do a lot of the same kind of stuff that you would get from an API portal, um, and it's going to tie in to uh, various event brokers, not just necessarily Solace brokers, but other types of brokers be able to observe, be able to catalog, be able to audit, and to discover what is data is actually flowing over the real-time runtime system and pull that data up into the event portal uh, for it to be discovered and tracked and everything like that. So this is what we're building uh, at Solace now. And I'm gonna give you guys a quick demo, guys and gals, demo of it as we kind of build our quick little event-driven application. So uh, it's been 20 minutes, right? Yes, so I got about half an hour left. I think that should be pretty good. I haven't checked if the chat, if there's any chats, uh, I'm not looking at that. Hopefully, is there a chat? No, nope, looks okay. Okay. Or maybe my computer's going really slow. Looks okay. Hey, if there's any questions, you know, please feel free. Either um, fire them in the chat if that's possible. I'll try and keep an eye on it. Or come and talk to us in the booth afterwards or stick around after I'm done. I'll stick around for a little, a little while. We can chat. Okay. Um, here we go. Is that the end of the thing? Uh, event portal, right. This is what we're gonna look at. So very quickly, um, the event portal is free to sign up for, uh, which is, um, you know, makes it pretty easy to try out. Head over to solace.cloud, you log in. This is kind of the view that you're gonna have. Uh, could my screen be made bigger? Like, can you make the, 
the desktop large because it uh, that's probably more important than my big head. Uh, if uh, if the moderator is out there, or maybe I can control it. Can I control it? All right. I don't know if I'm controlling that. It looks it looks bigger on mine. Okay. So um, this is our event. Uh, this is the uh, kind of Public Cloud Console from here. You can deploy uh, event brokers. This is kind of what we make. We make hardware versions, software versions, and fully managed as a service cloud brokers. You just come in here and spin one up. But the event portal is where you can come in and design your event-driven applications. Again, not necessarily solid ones, uh, but using the async API spec, you can design your applications and then deploy and uh, uh, take code and deploy it to other types of brokers. Uh, just for your knowledge, this is the API, uh, async API help page, async API um, there's the various companies, lots of information here. Um, talks about, you know, here's an example. So this is what the protocol looks like. If you're used to Swagger or OpenAPI, this should look very, very uh, familiar to you. So check that out. The specification is all here. When I first found Async API a couple of years ago, I did some code, you know, kind of typing out this, uh, you know, this uh, schema file by hand. Now that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. So that's why we thought, hey, let's make this portal, not because of me, but um, Solis came up with this idea. We make this portal to help developers and architects design this stuff. So this is just a, a quick view of you know, some of the applications that we have kind of in our own little group. We're playing around with it, different application domains. Inside an application domain, you'll have applications. Um, let's look at a, is this a simple one. I can't We'll have application um, that generate events. No, there's not a common simple one. And someone's messed the layout. So you have various applications. You're going to have events that are being generated and sent between applications. And then as part of that, you will also have schemas, the body or the payload of the event message. If I ungroup this, I think it's going to get even more crazy. So it's just, it looks a little bit crazy right now. Yeah, someone has definitely messed up the, uh, the kind of formatting. So you know what? We're going to leave that for now. And just go and start with something simple. Uh, to, for this uh, particular workshop. So I'm just going to go ahead and log out. I'm going to log in, not with my company account, but with my free account. So my free account, uh, you know, I just signed up using my personal email and that just to show kind of what, uh, what you can do. Now for this workshop, you know, in the 25 minutes we have, we use a code lab tutorial. Now these are little tutorials. Uh, you can find them on our developer landing page. So um, that kind of walk you through self guided uh, stuff. Okay. Um, we're going to be, you know, there's one for Solace, one's for Boomi. I have a REST one, um, but we're going to be doing this one using the event portal and async API code generation. So go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Apologies if the uh, video is a little jerky. Uh, hopefully it is okay. Mm -hmm. Let's double check something here. All right, looks good. Okay, so what we're going to learn, I'm just going to go ahead and skip through some of this. Uh, it's not quite as necessary as I need. This is what we're going to be doing is we have a data feed of taxis driving around and we are going to subscribe to that data um, as an event feed. And we're going to build a little spring cloud app that is going to take that data in and do some processing, do some analytics on it. Um, so I am going to, this is an example of what the topics look like that are being generated. You can see they start with the word taxi slash NYC slash V1 into more kind of like very specific levels, ride status, passenger count, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to build a little app that subscribes to this and then does some calculations and publishes other events as a result of its analytics. Now, to run this, you're going to need a few things. If you're on a Mac, uh, it's easy. You know, most of this uh, Node and NPM come with it. I'm on a Windows machine, so I had to use uh, the WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, but you can go ahead and get all of that installed. 
Uh, so I'm using Node. I have NPM here. Um, make sure that you've got it set up. Um, these are the connection informations for the broker, the Solace Event Broker that's running in the cloud. This is what we'll be using. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, basically down. So uh, go ahead and grab that. You know, I'm going to do this very, very quickly. Come on, Aaron. All right. So uh, let's go to. Now let's go to my home directory. All right. Um, Victor API days. Okay. And do this. Mm -hmm. There we go. Perfect. All right. Um, Log into the designer and we're going to import this particular project. So, oh, it's still logging out. That's not good. Not going. <laughs> All right, while well, that is waiting, I will carry on. So, we're basically going to import a and then we're going to start building on, on it. So we're going to define an application, and then we're going to define a schema uh, for that. So here is my, uh, here's going to be the initial view. Very, very simple. We're going to have this feed of taxis from the broker. Um, the event is going to be a taxi status update. Every time the taxi moves, it's driving along, it's going to be sending this update. So this could be your payment information, this could be your tracking information, this could be any customer information as they move through your system. Uh, you can send these as events onto your, your event mesh. We're gonna go ahead and build a little uh, ride drop-off processor that is gonna listen specifically to when uh, customers get dropped off uh, at the end of their ride. There we go. Gosh, it's going a little bit slow here. I wonder if it's because I'm sharing videos and trying to do too many things. <laughs> yeah, I'm even on, I'm not even on Wi-Fi. I am on a hardwired internet connection to my router. So I don't know why it's going so slow. Of demos, live demos. So basically, once that's done, uh, basically, yeah, import the, the kind of the starter program. Of course, you can just start designing uh, from, from nothing if you want and start building your application. Um, oh my gosh. So great, so great. Let's just keep, I'll just go through the code lab and let that kind of come up on its own. So this is essentially, you go ahead, you follow the steps here. You're gonna say, I'll build a new application, give it a description, all very point and click. You can add your owner to that so that it belongs to it. Uh, you can add tags to help you discover and find your events, and your applications later on. Um, once you save that, you find you have a new application here called Ride Drop-Off Processor. And then we're gonna add, we're gonna create a new event. So this drop-off processor is gonna listen to drop-offs and going to create, uh, uh, it's going to generate an event. So we need to create that event. Again, using a point and click interface, which I wish I could show you if my computer decided to start paying attention. And, um, you know, it would then go ahead and uh, specify what the topic is going to be. So define the topic, um, add the, some more information, and then you're going to need a payload. So besides the topic, um, an event consists of a message payload. This is all of the additional information, state perhaps, or where to go and find to get more information. So 
um, events can really be used both to carry state fully between applications or it can be used more as a signaling mechanism. So uh, notification that something has occurred and then provide URLs or links uh, so that you know if a client receives that, it can then go and make a, uh, a blocking, a, you know, an API, a standard API request uh, to get more information. So you can really find that a lot of event, um, a lot of architectures require both uh, you know, restful APIs or kind of you know service calls and getting the information out of databases, as well as event driven APIs or the notification lifestyle stuff. Go ahead and you basically create this schema. I'm not going to walk through this schema in its entirety, but it does use uh, the JSON schema. Just head over to jsonschema.net and it'll give you some examples on how to build the JSON schema. It basically kind of defines what the payload is going to look like, right? What is required? Is it a string? Is it an int? Is it a float? And defines your schema. So cut and paste that in there and then all right, that's finally loaded. Again, apologies that this is going so slow. I have no idea why. All worked fine earlier today. You go ahead and define your particular payload schema and then tell it that this particular event is going to be publishing it. So we are built an application. We've defined an application in our portal. It is going to publish these events and it uh, and what it looks like. So this is what essentially you end up. You've gone from having just taxis and sending updates to having taxis that are now being consumed by an additional processor. And then it is also generating on the back of that a ride average update. Wow. Okay. Again, apologies. We're just going to walk through what the code looks like. First thing you got to do is once you've kind of defined your application in the portal, you can now download and you're ready to use um, one of the async API code generators. So this particular generator, uh, this is where you find it. Um, just type this into your, uh, your terminal, it installs everything uh, using npm. And from there, you are now ready to generate your code skeleton, your coding application. A lot you know, they're not concerned about all of the wiring and the boilerplate code on how to like subscribe and where to publish and how to connect. A lot of that they just want left up to the um, kind of the framework. They just want to concentrate on the business logic. So as, a, as an application developer, just tell me, you know, once I get the data, what do I do with it? How do I process it? And then where do I send the resulting information? That is what, you know, the async API and the code generation capabilities uh, really come uh, come in handy. So I am going to uh, so basically from the portal you can actually generate async API code specification directly. You just right click on a particular application. Um, see here, is it ready? No, my internet is hosed. You right click on a particular application. You say you want to uh, manage events, or sorry, you click on async API, and you just download it. Basically, it downloads as this YAML file. And this is essentially what it looks like. The topics that uh, it wants to subscribe to, as well as publish on, the schema for those topics, and also you can then turn around and generate connectivity information as to where you are connecting that, um, that data from the event broker. So a little bit of information here, some additional uh, things you can add to the, um, to the template or specifically for Spring Cloud Streams. If you are generating a node application, you don't necessarily have to do this. And then you basically come down here and a single command will then generate all of the required code for your Spring application or whatever application to be able to connect. So I'm not gonna go through all of the uh, attributes, but you know, it's provided here as kind of just a one-click thing. Here at the in the bottom, you can kind of see this is the host where I'm going to be connecting and getting my data from, usernames and passwords, um, and where to actually find the file that I'm going to be using once I've downloaded it, and what type of application do I want. So in this particular case, I would be generating a Spring Cloud Stream uh, 
After you run that, you basically get this nice, hey, you've got some new code, go and check it out. Import it as a Maven project. If you're a Java person, it's very, very simple. You go into Eclipse or whatever your favorite IDE is and just download uh, the import the Maven project. And there you go. You now have this like framework that allows you to essentially start adding your business logic to the application. You don't have to worry about all the Solace code or Rabbit code or Kafka code. It just allows you to start uh, kind of doing the business logic on that application. So a couple little tweaks that are required, you know, in terms of subscriptions, uh, adding a few, some extra additional the business logic is included here. Um, they just tell you, yeah, so add a few little bits and pieces. Uh, here is the business logic. You can simply cut and paste this in. Essentially, um, Spring Cloud Streams just says, when you get a message, run this particular function. And so here is some reactive code that uses Flux to essentially calculate on a moving average uh, how many drop-offs we've seen in the last, I think it is 20 seconds. So it's basically doing stream processing uh, using uh, code generated by the Async API, and it is pulling it down uh, to the application. From there, once it's done, it will actually publish the result of that on the particular topic as specified in the uh, code generation. Uh, once you run the app, that's essentially it. You can then go ahead and uh, type to that data and pull it, uh, pull it out. It's very, very straightforward. It allows you to essentially uh, design your application on paper. I, I honestly, hey, there we go. I finally logged in. Excellent. Although it's going to take 20 minutes for the uh, for this to work. I don't have time to go and actually build this application. Designer, this is where you can actually go and you design your application. Now, in addition to the designer, Solace has also developed a uh, catalog capability. So as your enterprise grows, as the number of applications in your enterprise grows, uh, you can go ahead and browse all of the events that are available to be consumed. Let's see if this works. Let's see if it goes a little quicker here. I'm just going into one of the default applications that are included when you first sign up, right? When you first sign up with Solace Cloud, we'll give you this kind of default ride share. Um, it was uh, kind of the, the, the precursor to our taxi demo. And it allows you to kind of browse around the different applications, the billing app, passenger app, driver management, um, all these different microservices, and take a look at the events that are flowing between them. So if I click on events, I can come in here and see uh, some of this stuff. Now, I guess I hopefully it's going to work. I'm going to try and generate uh, an application schema. Let's say we wanted to um, uh, the billing app. The billing app is a very simple uh, little app. It subscribes to, I believe, a payment notification. There you go. Let me zoom in a little bit. It is subscribed to when a trip is yeah, a trip updated and it generates a receipt uh, event. Simply click on async API, tell it I want to download a YAML file. It's going to go ahead and download that. Billing app, I've run out of time to do the whole kind of code lab, so I'm just going to look at the downloaded file here. Billing. Oh, here we are. This is the basically this is the async API schema that can then turn around and go and actually start building my application. So it's all built for you. You don't have to go and hand code the async API uh, capabilities. You can do it all yourself. There are other tools out there that you can find on the async API page to help with code generation, to help with uh, verification, all that kind of stuff. But of course, you can also use the free Solace uh, design and portal. Once you've built your application, you bring it into uh, you bring it into your um, your environment, into Eclipse. You add your business logic, and you're able to then go ahead and start. So the catalog allows developers and um, you know, architects to find all of the different events that exist throughout your system. And then we also have a discovery capability as well. You know, once you've deployed your application, how do you go about finding uh, what events are actually being used? 
you know, how do you essentially listen to the data that's going through your event-driven system uh, to find out kind of what uh, topics or what events are being used the most? And so um, there's all these sorts of discovery capabilities as well. And not, again, not just for Solace, but this will be made available for other types of event brokers. Uh, we're going to be uh, attending the Kafka Summit next week. I hope everybody is registered for it. And uh, we're going to be making some pretty big announcements uh, there. Uh, stay tuned for that. Um, but this is just an example of the discovery capability that is available through uh, the event portal for looking at your topic hierarchy. This is a graph showing you the, the hierarchical nature of your topics, but sorted and, and sized by the relative frequency. So I can take a look at the different topics that are flowing through my system. I can see that bus topics are very common compared to light rail topics are not very common. And then I can drill into them and go and take a look. So of the light rail topics, we click on that and it will recenter the graph to take a look uh, closer in at what's also available. So a lot of information we're building, this discovery capabilities into the event portal uh, to allow developers, architects, data scientists, audit uh, people to be able to go and take a look at all the information that's in there. So that is what we are building. Um, we continue to evolve it. Uh, name, you know, whichever broker that you're happy to use uh, will be made available in there. It allows you to just go ahead and design your event-driven application without having to use what we used to use in the day was, you know, Excel spreadsheets for your topic cycle. Uh, your Word documents to keep track of the different applications, specifications, and schemas. All of this is now available inside the portal. Uh, it's free to check out. Uh, head over to solace.dev. There's links for brokers. There's links for the portal. Uh, everything is in there. I'm going to go ahead and just switch to this last slide. Um, I've got about five minutes left, so I'm going to stop there. Again, apologies for the uh, the very poor response I'm on the Definitely not the uh, Solace Cloud Portal. It's it's my uh, my laptop. I can tell that is having some problems there uh, with the uh, with the connection. So apologies for that. If there are any questions, I'm going to check the chat. I haven't looked at the chat in a little while. Um, there's some polls out there. Here are some links. By the way, here are some links. Just scan them with your. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more information uh, on Solus, or again, we have a group here at API Day Singapore. Come and talk to us. We'd be happy to talk to you about anything and everything uh, Solus. Viewers can double click on the. Ah, thanks. Thanks, YL. Viewers can double click. Again, hey, any questions out there, please give me a shout. Um, a bit of a plug. Uh, if you want to talk more about Solus specifically, uh, every Tuesday, Noon Singapore time, I do a Twitch live stream uh, where I talk about Solus. We just talk about coding, we talk about event driven architectures, um, we talk about APIs actually quite a bit, both programming APIs and event driven APIs. So yeah, um, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of stop there. Uh, if people have some questions, uh, I'm gonna stick around inside here. I'll watch the chat. Otherwise, come and chat uh, talk to us in our booth. Again, apologies for the. Uh, the, uh, the latency issues with my my, my connection here. But uh, yeah, thanks very much. And hope you had a good talk. Hope you check out the asyncapi.com uh, specification and come and check out Solus uh, as the portal uh, helps you build those applications. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, thank you. <laughs> was the connection really bad for, I mean, can I, was it, it seemed to be going really slow. Was it going slow? Was the video terrible? Not for me. Okay, good thing. Well, that's good. I don't know why it was taking so long to load. It was perfectly fine before I got on, <laughs> before I got on a web, a webcast. So I'm not sure what happened there. No, fine for me too. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Vincent. Hey, Daniel, I like your last name. All right, Aaron, I'm Aaron Lee. <laughs> That's very confusing for a lot of people. When I moved to Asia, a lot of people get confused by my last name when I show up for a meeting and uh, I, I walk in, they're not expecting. Uh, 
Yeah, someone with my last name. Hey, thanks, Vincent. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Come talk to us in the booth. Um, ask us some questions. Ask us about uh, our event mesh, event distribution, integration, how we can make your enterprise, make your business. And again, it's free to sign up. You can download our stuff for free, give it a try. Not, not even trial, like you can run this you know, forever uh, in your environment if you want, one of our brokers. So, yep. Thanks everybody. Enjoy the rest of the conference. I will be in the booth in a little while or whenever the booth break is to chat with you. Do do. All right. All right, all right. 14 people, 13 people still here. I wonder if they fell asleep from me kind of droning on. <laughs> yes, maybe. Check out these QR codes. This one and this one. This one and this one. Give them a scan. Give us a scan. Come to the booth. Get some swag. We have some stuff to give away. Come and tell us that you saw my presentation. YL will hook you up. Yeah, we're in the partner village. Thanks, Cindy. Come find us in the booth. Happy to talk. I wish my laptop went. I don't know why it went so slow. Mm hmm. All right, come by our booth, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the talks. Okay. I think that's my time. I'll stick around for a few more minutes just in case anybody has a question or happy to uh, you know, come talk in the booth. Of course, of course. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining. Hope it was all right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, dev. Solus.dev, your one-stop shop for API, brokers, code labs, how we can make Solus rest 
We can talk, have Solace Pub Sub talk to REST gateways. We can do that. It's pretty cool. The future is yours. <laughs> All right. Okay, everybody. Well, that's uh, I guess that's it for me. I am going to log out. Uh, thanks very much, and see you in the booth. All right. Bye bye. Do I want to leave?